Okay, I'm gonna really try and make this video not as long as the first take that I did of it, which took like 25 minutes. Oh my god, I thought it was gonna take 10. Anyways, quick disclaimer, my husband is watching the Super Bowl, <laughs> and you might hear random screaming of masculine or feminine nature in the background. If so, I'll just stop and laugh because it's ridiculous. Anyways, so um, today's topic is, is more better? Hmm. So I get this question a lot from patients and uh, they'll usually, they'll start on hormones, they're feeling good and they'll say, when are we gonna increase my dose? And I'm like, we haven't even rechecked your labs yet so we don't even know where your levels are. How are we gonna increase dose? We'd be flying blind. Bah. Anyways, um, so this question stems from a lot of stuff. It stems from, uh, you know, they're happy and they think, wouldn't more be better? Uh -huh. um, and then also, Traditionally, I do get, 100% do get that like healthcare providers gatekeep and I believe outright lie sometimes to their patients, um, usually out of ignorance on their own part, they just don't know um, the answer and so they kind of do a poo poo, you know, uh, just kind of a BS answer to get off that topic really quick. Um, it's not the way it should be handled, but a lot of people are uncomfortable admitting that they don't know something. Um, Anyways, so I do get that people are used to being given like half-ass hormone therapy um, or other practices tend to like low-dose people for a prolonged period of time saying that they need an introductory phase of a year or whatever. That's uh, whatever. That's not how we operate here at our clinic. Um, we start people off if you're going for full transition results, that is not like if you're going for more of an androgynous ish thing or just testing the waters or something and we're going with lower doses, this is completely different. But if you're going for a more full transition look uh, towards masculine or feminine, uh, we are going to be starting you off on full doses like that. It's not a thing that we're going to low dose you for some kind of period of time. That's that. <clears throat> no, um, we will sometimes advise people, hey, you might want to cut the dose in half for the first week or two just to minimize any side effects going in because it is kind of be <laughs> it's going to be a shock uh, to your system having one hormone go up and the other go down. Um, and so you can minimize your side effects by easing into it. But at any rate, we start at full doses, so when someone asks for more, we're like, mm. Mm. Now, while sometimes doses do need to be increased, I want people to understand that we start them at full doses, and so we need labs to figure out where your levels are at before we can then increase or decrease or stay the same, because we wouldn't know what we're doing if you just say, hey, I want to change my dose, and I'm like, have we got labs? And you're like, nope. I'd be like, well, how do I know where to change it for? <laughs> but uh, anyways, so like I said before, it's flying blind and it would be pretty negligent on my part to just be like, okay, and do it. And I'm gonna discuss why. So first we're gonna cover testosterone um, and why it's not a great idea to just fly blind uh, with high levels of that. And then we're gonna discuss estradiol therapy and why it's not a great idea to fly blind with high levels with that. So testosterone, hopefully quickly, <laughs> um, let's say that your levels are whatever, normal levels that I'm looking for depending on when they're drawn is about 300 to 900-ish of a total testosterone level. Let's say that you're feeling great and we just randomly increase your dose for no freaking reason and your levels are running twice the top of the normal. They were 1800 or whatever. Uh, anyway, the set point is gonna be different for everybody, whether we're talking about testosterone or estrogen therapy. Uh, this is gonna be genetically driven where your set point for these adverse effects are, but let's just go extreme with 1800 because that would probably do it to just about anybody. Um, so your testosterone level is 1800, what can happen? So what's gonna happen first is that this wonderful little thing called aromatase is gonna go and testosterone and aromatase are gonna combine and testosterone is going to aromatize or change into different estrogens. Now there are different forms of estrogens that it can uh, transition into and which kind depends on you. Um, but you can imagine this is not great whenever testosterone becomes an estrogen because if you do that a lot, <laughs> exactly what you're thinking is what can happen. Uh, you can get increased chest tissue, swelling and whatnot. You can get, um, oops, sorry, I was gonna burp, but it wasn't worth it, so here we are. Um, anyway, so increased chest tissue and or swelling. You can get um, 
increased cycle problems, either bleeding or whatnot. There he goes, he's screaming. <laughs> Glad I gave that disclaimer. I'm too stupid to use the editing software to get rid of that. So if you heard it, you heard it. If you didn't, oh well, meh, you'll live. Um, so anyway, so testosterone can change into estrogen whenever your levels get too high and that can cause menstrual issues such as bleeding, cramping, whatnot. Um, it can cause chest fat deposition to even recreate breasts. Uh, to a degree if you've had top surgery. So these are things we don't really want to happen. That's why we watch your levels pretty close and won't just arbitrarily increase it just because things feel good and you think they're going well. Um, the next thing that's kind of bad about having elevated testosterone levels without, you know, regard to <laughs> the the feminizing effects that can happen from it uh, is that all the effects that people worry about with testosterone with uh, regard to cardiovascular risks uh, become a lot more in focus whenever you have these elevated testosterone levels. So things like heart attack and stroke, you know, um, adverse cholesterol levels and things like that, you know, so you got hardening of the arteries. Blah, 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 blah. So those are the more prolonged effects of people that have this elevated T level. Uh, probably for you know longer than a year for several years or whatever. Over time, that's when this is going to happen. But I mean, it does happen, and so. You know, you don't want to have these elevated testosterone levels just sitting there increasing your overall cardiovascular health risk. Um, and that would be on top of whatever your normal risk would be, you know. Um, so, in summation, testosterone being too high can cause testosterone to change into estrogen, which seems pretty dumb in and of itself. And then it also increases your cardiovascular risks over time. Um, now, on to estrogen therapy. So estrogen therapy is similar in that there is a different set point for everybody. It's not going to be the same level that sets things off for, you know, everybody. It's going to be genetically set. Um, but let's say, you know, talking about estrogen injections, which are typically done about once a week, uh, the levels I would be looking for would be maybe somewhere between 150 and 500, depending on when uh, the labs were drawn. And let's say that your level is 1,000 or 1,200 or whatever. Um, so what can happen whenever your estrogen levels go above 500, 600 or so? Well, in the immediate time, like if, if they're prolonged above that for around about like 72 hours to a week or so, it can actually kick on an opposite effect in the body, kind of sorta like what I just discussed with testosterone and how it aromatizes into estrogen. But rather than, you know, getting aromatized or something like that uh, into testosterone, uh, the body actually kicks on in a production of other androgens, uh, which are can be precursors to testosterone. They function just like testosterone in the body to varying degrees, meaning that they can create masculinizing effects such as increased body hair, facial hair, um, increased um, activity downstairs. Uh, so anyways, masculinizing effects can occur with too much estrogen. Huh, who'd have thought, right? Um, anyway, that's the more immediate effects that can happen. And some people don't notice it you know, at first, and it takes a long time for, for that kind of stuff to settle in and for them to actually notice. You know, especially if someone had electrolysis, it might take a while because then new hair follicles would, uh, would mature and form and then start producing hair. So it could take a, you know, a few years even uh, for people to notice that if they've had any electrolysis. Uh, done, but they may notice increased body hair or increased activity downstairs, however, before then. Some people, though, take that as, oh, my libido is returning. That's a great thing, you know, and, and, and they're not bothered by it, but they don't realize that these androgens are increasing in their system over time. Anyways, then the long-term effects of having that high of an estrogen uh, or estradiol level in the body are similar to that of elevated testosterone. So you see elevated cardiovascular risks such as um, blood clots and strokes. Um, and that is from, you know, a year or more with these kind of estrogen levels. Um, so that's the more long-term effects of having those super high levels of estradiol. Whereas the short-term effects are more that it causes the body to kick on production of other androgens, which could cause some masculinizing features to reappear. Um, which are, of course, not exactly what we're going for here um, with estrogen therapy. So that's to sum up, short term can have some androgens form, long term cardiovascular risks increase. Um, so like I said, I do understand that a lot of people get very excited whenever they get on hormone therapy and they're just ready to go, go, go. Um, and they have either heard 
or been lied to themselves or maybe not even lied to it's just they had a healthcare provider who didn't practice the same way we do i hate i really do hate to say lie or whatever but a lot of people just they don't get super into this stuff um like we do here so anyways um so i get why people would figure that you know more 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 is better 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 um but these are the main reasons there are other reasons why it's not so great but as I said, the first video I did was 25 minutes long and I was trying to make this one a little sh more short and sweet so that you wouldn't fall asleep all the way through it. Um, so know that those few things that I mentioned are the main effects. There are others. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't mind when people ask about that, ask about increasing. I just explain to them, hey, you know what? We need to check your levels. We need to know where they are. This is why. You know, and um, I don't know why people don't explain that to their patients. Usually it seems like they're just like, no, because I said so. Anyways, I don't get that at all. I want my patients educated about why we're doing what we're doing and why we do it, when we do it, and how we do it, and all that stuff. Um, so, <laughs> that being said, um, I know there are also people out there, you know, YouTubers and stuff, who are trying to get likes and subscribes and stuff like that by saying, all kinds of exciting sounding things like, oh no, you really do need to have these super high estrogen levels and whatever. But you know, I mean, whatever. I mean, people are gonna say anything out there. You've seen some crazy crap put out on TikTok and YouTube and everything. Anybody can have an account. Um, at the very least, you can verify that we are an actual clinic and actual healthcare providers if you do about five minutes of research. Um, so, there is that, whereas if you have someone screaming that you need a 2,000 testosterone level to live, you can probably look them up and they're just a nut. Me. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> um, one other thing, I do know that people get very frustrated with how slow, especially estrogen therapy can be, and testosterone therapy usually has a speedy um, pick up that first year and you see a lot of changes. Uh, and then you're like, eh, because after that, it's kind of a slow and steady progression after the first year or so. Um, estrogen therapy takes two to three times as long as testosterone therapy does to produce these significant effects, uh, which hardly seems fair, but pfft, here we are. Um, anyway, so just going to reiterate, like I've said in other videos, that this uh, hormone therapy is a second puberty. In your first puberty didn't take less than a year, neither is this one. Uh, you're going to go through some spurts, you're going to go through some dry spells and plateaus and everything. As long as you're keeping your levels where they need to be and you're taking your meds the way they're prescribed, you will progress, you know, you, you will do it. It just takes time and commitment. Um, and I know nobody likes to hear that because it's just like trying to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little burst and you get excited and then nothing happens for three weeks and you're just like, ah, screw this and eat a cake. Um, but anyways, I just don't want anyone out there, you know, overly judging themselves because things are going a little slow. There are YouTubers out there who like to claim that they got a full set of boobs in like six months and they're either lying, had surgery, or I don't know. I've just, I've never said, seen a mature set of breasts in, you know, six months or whatever. I've seen some swelling that was quite impressive. That was not actual breast tissue development and stuff. That was someone doing something very bad with a medication they should not have been taking that they got off of uh, an online source. Um, but anyways, uh, so be careful out there with the education that you consume. I'm sitting here saying that and I'm a YouTube channel, but like I said, it doesn't take but five minutes to look up our clinic and find out about Stacy and Lee Pace and that we actually are healthcare providers out here trying to provide education to the community. Um, whereas you can check on Joe Blow and find out that they're just some nut living in their mom's basement, you know, free basin. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, y'all know, write to me with your questions and everything if it's, you know, a topic that I don't already have written down, which I have like 50 topics for videos just sitting there waiting to be done. I just need the time to do them. Uh, then I'll put it on the list or um, maybe discuss it at one of my little um, new live streams, which hopefully I'm going to schedule another one of those for the coming couple of weeks or so, but I'll put it out there whenever I do. Um, let's see. So, okay, well, I guess I'll end it. I thought that Lee was going to be doing a lot more screaming, so I guess either it's a boring game or I don't know what's going on. Maybe hmm, I should go check on him. <laughs> Anyways, so y'all have fun. Write to me with your questions. Um, don't believe everything you read on the internet. <laughs>